Conventional upright bicycles have been in use for more than a hundred years, but they don't have to be this shape. Since the 1930s, cyclists have been experimenting with lying down to reduce air resistance and improve pedal power. These bikes are called recumbents. The mechanical design is the same as for an upright bike. It's the configuration that's different. Jeffrey Caswell has designed a recumbent bike to go fast, very fast. I built something as low as possible to the ground because I believe that the lower you go, the faster you go. I guess I have the need for speed. I named this bike the luge because it's, it's like a luge going downhill. For me, it's, it's quite exhilarating, and, and I guess I live my life on the edge a little bit, and I rather enjoy it. <laughs> it's better than sitting in my rocking chair. Recumbent bikes can go even faster when covered in a streamlined shell. Reduced air turbulence helps these amateur cyclists go 20 miles per hour faster than a professional upright racer. Recumbents uh, don't present the uh, blockage in terms of, of, of wind flow. Uh, there's nothing to catch air. If you can reduce the profile and make something very thin, it's going to go fast. That's all there is to it. There's a prize of $25,000 offered to the first team that can pedal a bike over 75 miles per hour on a flat highway. A leading contender is the Varna bike team from Canada. The bike's designer is a sculptor by trade. He's hoping his artistic design will bring victory. Um, yeah, I got it. This bike is built to fit only one man, Sam Whittingham, the pilot. Thousands of years of evolution have uh, really influenced the design of this bike. You, can, you know, you can learn a lot from nature, and uh, that's certainly where the designer got his ideas from, rather than a lot of, you know, techie computer stuff. The Varna bike is low-lying, just 18 inches off the ground. It has five gears and weighs around 60 pounds. What makes this bike extreme is uh, the fact that you can go that bloody fast under your own steam. There's nothing quite like it to some, you know, sometimes I'll think, oh wow, you know, to go that fast and it's just me. There's nothing else helping me. There's no, no wind, there's no motor, nothing, just me. That's kind of neat. Practicing for his record attempt, Sam's taken the Varna bike to 60 miles per hour on a flat road and over 80 down a gentle slope. But riding it down a steep slope could be deadly. If you were to run this bike down any kind of steep hill, it'd be an absolute suicide run. You'd probably top out at just over 200 miles an hour, and that would probably be the last run I ever took. Another contender for the $25,000 prize is Matt Weaver. Matt and his father believe they could break the 75 mile per hour barrier with their machine, the Virtual Edge. The idea of being able to go faster than the national speed limits, the laws of the land, with your legs alone, is, is very exciting. This complex bicycle will be encased in an aerodynamic pod. Today, father and son are road testing the technology of the virtual edge. And this bicycle is very much part human body and then part another basic fundamental element, the wheel, and put them together and see what they can do. The bike has four gears and is extremely light, just 34 pounds. It's 
suddenly you notice things are starting to vibrate a little more and things are zipping by you faster. It's like being in an airplane. You actually bank through the turns. It's like flying a fighter jet as low as you dare go. Pretty soon you go, wow, and you feel like Superman. But will Weaver's virtual edge beat Whittingham's Varna bike? Eventually, it's definitely possible to go 75 miles an hour. Uh, at this point, technology is probably not quite there. A few refinements here and there, a little more training on my part. Um, but it's, you know, one day, you know, all records will fall, and that one's, that one's coming up. The design of these bikes allows the riders great speed, but there's one fundamental problem. Stopping is a completely different issue. Without help, I can't stop. I'll just flop over like a dead fish on the side of the road. The quest for speed isn't everything. Over the years, bike designers have experimented with other extremes. It seemed that human-powered flight would never happen. Then in 1979, a team of British scientists built a super light plane with a vast wingspan. Pilot Brian Allen hoped to cycle the Gossamer Albatross across the 22 mile stretch of sea that divides England from France. It took all his energy just to get airborne. Then there was no chance of a rest until landfall. Brian's body generated 0.3 horsepower, enough to fly the plane at 11 miles per hour. After almost three hours of constant pedaling, he made it, landing on a French beach. Designers are experimenting with other human-powered planes, trying to fly their machines more than 100 miles. This is the Velair. It's the brainchild of Pierre Frank, who uses a recumbent bicycle rather than an upright one to power this plane. I'm sitting in a recumbent seat, uh, pedaling like hell. Uh, with those pedals, I drive a chain and a drive shaft and the propeller in the back. And this propeller pushes the plane. And I fly like the same speed, a little bit faster than, than a bicycle. Some cyclists can make their bikes fly even without wings. 